this is Patrick Coogan and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. Um, we're just doing a, a special show really on the, just the huge news, transfer news really for a change and it's primarily for our Cork fans really. Of course the big signing of Damien Delaney returning to his hometown club etc. So we decided why not we'll bring in our palace expert here, Nate, a <laughs> uh, friend of the show. Uh, been, you've seen him on a few times but... Furry Sins, Nate is a is a lifelong Palace fan, so we just yeah. wanted to just really get the Palace point of view on, on on the move and really just kind of just get a different viewpoint really on it. So obviously, you know, he started off his career at Cork City, then made the venture over, played at a number of different clubs, and I think it's fast forward to 2012, yeah. where he joins you guys in a short term contract as you're yeah. pu- pushing uh, promotion, and six years later, here we are. So how would you describe his Palace career? Um. Delaney's career at Palace was initially it was a random signing. No yeah. one saw him coming Very in. So. But the story behind it is fascinating because Dougie Friedman was begging him to come and just train with the lads because we were in really, really bad states at the time. We hadn't won a game in the championship, so it wasn't looking great for us. Um, but Delaney came in, made his debut literally three days after signing against Sheffield Wednesday. And after that, Palace went on this 14 game unbeaten run, which kick started our promotion campaign. And um, <clears throat> Damo quickly became a fan favourite, which is typical at Palace. We're not easy <laughs> yeah. to please because <laughs> yeah. we've seen some cloggers at the back. Yeah, very true. But, um, you know, Delaney just came in and hit the ground running. And then obviously the, the, the tears at Wembley kind of sealed how Palace fans really took to him. And ironically, after promotion, he was the first name people were thinking was going to be chucked out and players coming in. But that obviously didn't prove to be the case. Yeah, he kind of latched on to that whole momentum, really, at the time, really, mm. didn't it? Um, as you said, a fan's favourite. You know, the, the one memory that kind of sticks into my head is, as a Liverpool fan is that first goal in the, the infamous 3-3. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he was that kind of... He, he, it almost felt like his whole Palace career, to me, and it was from the outset, was just pure momentum, really. It just as short-term deal, it gets a bit longer, and then here we go. And, you know, almost a fan's favourite, would you describe? Rock of the defence, is that is that going too far? No, not really, because um, Palace at the time that he signed were very much give us your unwanted players, give us the players you don't think have a chance and we'll turn them into something. I mean, Mila Yedinek was a prime example. He got Great. rejected by a Turkish club and Popovic who was working for, for Friedman, said, listen, you need someone in midfield. I know a guy who can help you. Obviously, Jedinak proved to be a, a stalwart, as did Delaney, because we had Peter Ramage. Jesus Christ, <laughs> the, the memories. But, um, you know, we'd, so we'd some defenders at the club that just never looked like championship defenders. You know, and considering where we were, and we were favourites to be relegated that season, Delaney came in, and as I said before, we just skyrocketed up towards the top six, and we were all thinking, wait a minute, this ain't right. You know, we <laughs> <Yeah>. don't do this. <laughs> this isn't supposed to happen. Yeah, but he was almost that that rock. You know, he's a big physical guy. Yeah. Um. You know, you've seen that in his, in his I think his nine caps he made for Ireland under yeah. Trapattoni during that time as well. Mm. And, you know, I remember watching him in a couple of friendlies here. And whether he was just this huge beast at the back, really. And you know, you know, uh, uh, how would you describe his? Like for, for for primarily for Cork City fans, you know how like obviously the last season didn't end so well. You know, mm. it was only four appearances, two in the cup uh, and and two in the league. Yeah. But how would you describe his kind of as for somebody that's watched him week in week out? How would you describe his style of player? You know, or how do you think he's going to fit into the for the Cork City side? He's a captain on the pitch. Simple as he doesn't take any. You know, he's not accepting when people say, "Oh, it's okay." You know, he he wants to win. Even if he doesn't win a trophy, he just wants to win. And because he's going back to his hometown club, he'll want to do well for Cork City. So if I was a Cork fan, I'd be looking forward to seeing him come back because he's got that Premier League experience where he can bring in to, Absolutely. to, to Cork. Because obviously Cork could go into, the, into, into Europe this season. So that would be big for them because he's played against some of the best players that England has to offer. Yeah, and it's it's kind of, for me now as well, it's always he's... Um... He always for even it's still cliche. Big guy looks comfortable with the ball, but he mm. does. He was he always struck me as a decent passer, and you know, no disrespect, you would have gone direct at times under Palace, but he was always a guy that looked composed on the ball. Am I right in saying that? You know, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, <clears throat> we've never had like a fancy style of play in our history, so we've had to, we've had to play with the players we've got on our hand. You know, for every Will Zaha, we get we get a Stern John, <laughs> or we get a Yaya Sanogo. So with, with players like Delaney, we knew what he was doing. He's take it out from the field. He's just head it long or punt it long, and that's what he was doing. But um, one memory with Delaney that sticks out is Chelsea away in the fifteen sixteen season, where he made Diego Costa look frightened of his of his own skin. I remember that game because um, I, mean, I was there for that, and that was our first win at Chelsea in God knows how long. 
But to see Diego Costa literally look as if he'd just seen a ghost. It's just Delaney was full on beast mode. He just wasn't him. having it. Because yeah. he said he, he's, he's come up against worse in League Two. <laughs> just because it's Costa, people think, oh, he's, he's this, that, that. But Delaney said, listen, I've, I've had to come up with, with, with John from the Dog and Duck in League Two. <laughs> you know, and obviously going back to Cork now, he'll be well aware, or well able to handle any striker that tries to give him you know the rough up that's the thing like uh, I'm just doing a bit of research and even just following his career, his career like obviously he was a bit steadied with our own steadied waters really for Palace this season you know mm. start off De Boer then Hotch comes in to, to make the big escape <clears> and all that <throat> but uh, you know, would that be concerning? Or what did you put down his lack of game time th- this season really like two, two pr- Premier League appearances is pretty you know it's not great now is it for someone that was so involved in the team for, no, for so it, long no it, it's not great you're right but if you look at the likes of Julian Speroni who's been a stalwart at the club since, I think, 2004. He only played a handful of games as well. Unfortunately, that is the case, though, is that we've brought in players like Mamadou Saka, and we've got James Tompkins, and we've got players ahead of Delaney now, whereas beforehand he was the first name on the team sheet. Mm-hmm. But as time goes on, and we've had to try and adapt to new managers and the way they want to play, he's just fallen down the pecking order. And I think he knew himself his game time's going to be massively limited. However... That didn't stop people wanting to see more of him. So anytime he was at the games, the fans would go to him immediately because he's just that kind of, he's a cult hero now at Palace. I wouldn't say legend because I think that term gets thrown away too Mm -hmm. much, but he's definitely the kind of player we'll look back on and go, do you know what? For a player that promised so much, he delivered so much. Absolutely. Because he said it himself. He came to Palace thinking he should just jack it all in. And Dougie Friedman, by the skin of his teeth, convinced him just to sign a short-term contract, and the rest yeah, is history. It's, it's been some career since, yeah. Mm. I suppose one of the things, you know, it's the old cliche, you know, don't change. You know, the team hunting for points on the bottom, you get a back five, and you, you stay with it, and all that. So mm. that, that probably came up uh, short. But but now, just to look forward now, and this is more primarily again for the Cor- for the Cork City fans. It's you know, it really exciting. You know, you could see the excitement in John Caulfield as well. You know, speaking about you know getting the, that influence, that captain uh, character back on the team, yeah. and you know. Know, and it's interesting as well it, it, it sounds a bit mad but you know he's coming back to play Champions League football you know and it, it, it's, no, it's great well, it's great for him personally as well isn't it oh yeah yeah but it's, it's that romantic view of he's come back to his hometown club and <clears throat> no every Palace fan probably be following Cork City now to just, to just, <laughs> yeah. just to see how he gets on because as I say he's left Sellers Park very much a part of the fabric of the club and the fans a lot of fans are gutted he's gone even though we knew it was it was inevitable I mean when Spironi goes it's going to be horrible but Delaney now at Cork City the whole fan base now will be excited, and I would be, because he will lead that team. When, when, when they're thinking, how are we going to get out of this? He's going to go, hang on a minute, this ain't right, and he's going to make something happen. You, you, you can certainly manage uh, all, all Palace fans, all, as will all Cork fans, be looking forward to that draw in, in a week's time for the Champions League qualifiers. Well, you know, they'll, keep, times. they'll, they'll keep an eye out for Delaney, because, you know... Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be plenty, plenty of captain uh, characters, performances at, at Turners Cross coming up, as they will be all around the league. And, and hopefully all around Europe as well if Cork can go on a, a big run. But there we are, folks. Thank you very much, Nate, for coming Pleasure. in and joining. Um, that's been Irish Fo- Football Fan TV. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And we will talk to you all very soon.